Hi everyone, I hope you're all well, having a good day. Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of our Pokemon VGC 2019 Battle Series. We are here again today, kicking off and continuing on with this X-Ray team that we started playing last week on the channel. If you missed any of the games from last week or yesterday even, and you'd like to go back and check those out, go up here and link a card for you. You can check those out before you come into today's episode and continue on with some more really good games. So, as I said at the start of the week in yesterday's episode, what we're going to do is we were kind of talking Toying around with the idea to maybe change up this core as we go into the end of this week, but we'll see how this team plays out because we're on pretty good terms with the team, we're having really good results with it. So, if we continue with that, we'll play it out till Friday. If not, we might change it up. And if we don't feature some of the other XY cores that we've been talking about throughout the last week, then we will feature them on the streams and maybe some other things that we'll do outside of that. But just to recap the team as well, it is down in the description below with a roll pace and a poker pace for you guys to check out, try out if you'd like to. If you do, let me know how you get on with the team. But to recap, we've got the Rayquaza, which is the mega of the team. We've got the Xerneas, the Landorus, the Eurian, it's got the Z-Move, the Tapu Fini, Incineroar, and Serena. So without further ado, guys, thank you so much for tuning in, and we'll jump straight into it. So... I'm looking forward to this today. We didn't have the best end to yesterday's episode, but it was a really nice way to end. It was a nice team to play. So we'll click in some music. Um, and as always, guys, if you enjoy this sort of content, do remember to leave a like on the video. It really helps out the channel. Do subscribe to the channel for more Pokemon content and also leave your comments in the comment section because I love hearing from you all. And I will get back to you as soon as I am able to. So hopefully it doesn't take too long to find our first opponent of the day. If it does, as always, I'll just cut out and we'll come straight back in where we bump into our first opponent. And we have our first opponent of the episode. So we're going up against a Japanese rated player. I think 1594 and we'll hop straight into team. So our first opponent today is running a team of Groudon, Tapu Fini, Incineroar, Ferrothorn, Kangaskhan and that Dawnwings Necrozma. So is it Dawnwings or is it Ultra Necrozma? Who knows? They could have Trick Room though because this team is quite Trick Room kind of centered. There's not really any other speed control on the team you can identify other than maybe Icy Wind on the Tapu Fini. So indication is that it probably is more than likely a Trick Room team. And maybe it's not Dawn, uh, Ultra Necrozma, maybe it is just Dawn Wings. Uh, but what are we going to do? Obviously Incineroar is really great here for the Ferrothorn, the, the Dawn Wings, the Ultra Necrozma, whichever variant it is. The Intimidate's amazing for Groudon, Incineroar and Kangaskhan as well. So we definitely want our Incineroar. I think as well, like Landorus is pretty nice here to be honest. Um, and we could bring Tapu Fini, Landorus and do we want... Rayquaza or do we want Xerneas? I think Rayquaza is better here. I think in our match yesterday, one of the things that I feel like we probably did was force a Xerneas when maybe Landorus would have been a better choice for us in that kind of build, especially against Primal Groudon and just having that option there to deal with it and double intimidate as well. It's always useful when, when a team's so heavily based around physical attackers. So we'll lock in with these and get into our first game. So good luck to my opponent in your very flowery pink shirt that you've got on today and let's hope we can make up for that 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 loss that we had yesterday because i kind of was enjoying the run that we were on with the team but it's still doing super well so hopefully we just continue that um we just need to not get ahead of ourselves not think about the score think about the pokemon think about what's in front of us and just go from there so we see the dawn wings necrozma and tapu fini come out from my opponent Hmm. And we'll get the Intimidate off with Incineroar. I think one of the things I'd rather do than fake out here, I could Snarl for sure, but I kind of tempted just to U-turn out on the Tapu Fini and go for... Uh, the Dawnwings is likely to protect though, isn't it? I don't want to get trapped in and just take... Uh, or could we? It, the damage onto the Necrozma might be quite nice if we do go for the U-turn there and then um, go for an icy wind. Yeah, we'll do that. Necrozma switches out, which is fine. Ground I'm going to come in. It's also all right because you get the icy wind off, which is really, really good for us. Because one of the things we can try and bait my opponent in with this next turn is a scald switch to Ray on that Groudon, which we've not been able to do yet, which would be really nice if we could catch my opponent out with. 
So there's our icy wind. We do outspeed the Tapu Fini, so even if we get icy winded, we know that we should be faster than their Groudon Tapu Fini the next turn. Um, and there's the icy wind back in return. And we'll just get a bit more chip damage onto that Groudon, which is always helpful because most of the time the Skull is. It's got a high roll, but it is a roll. And the more damage we get into this Groudon right now, the better our chances are to get it with a Skull. So, I don't know if I want to bring in Rayquaza yet. I might bring in... Hmm. No. I might bring in Landorus. Get the Intimidate onto it. Yeah. If my DS will load. Come on, DS. Okay. Yeah. So, Landorus got a pretty safe switch in here. We can switch out. Get the Intimidate onto that Landorus. That, that Groudon. And bring in... in hmm. The problem with bringing in Rayquaza, obviously, is taking an Icy Wind. When we have just got the Tectonic Rage that we could launch into the Groudon right now. Hmm. That's the big thing, because I feel like we're probably forcing the Groudon out almost anyway. So we could preserve this for later and not bluff it right now and just go for another Icy Wind. And the Groudon's going to be minus two by the time the Incineroar comes in. And I think the Groudon probably protects here as well. So the next turn is where we could potentially... Mm, probably not, because the Icy Wind will probably... Ah, the Groudon is forced out, so that's good. And we see the Necrozma come back in? No, it's going to be the Ferrothorn. Alright. That's fine. Right, so we get that speed drop again, another icy wind coming out. But we're putting a heck of a lot of pressure onto this Ferrothorn this, this turn. Um, the one thing I probably want to do... Hmm, I don't think the Ferrothorn attacks into Finny, honestly. I really don't see it. Because hmm. I'm kind of tempted to go for the Flare Blitz into the Ferrothorn, honestly. But I think it's so early on in the game, I don't think my opponent risks it. Although if we don't go for it and we don't punish that, then that's kind of our own fault, isn't it? I'm going to go for the Flare Blitz. Um, and I'm going to go for another Icy Wind. So the type of Finny switch is out. What are we going to see come in? Necrozma. I wonder if we do see the, the, um, the Ferrothorn. Yeah, it's not protecting. So this is what I mean. Like Opponents just assume that Oh, you're sitting in front of an Incineroar, I'll probably be able to get a, an attack off, but if you don't punish that that decision, then then fair credit to your opponent, because you're you're allowing them to do that, and we're just checking that here. I know the, the worst thing that we've got going into this next turn is that um, <clears throat> the Groudon gets a free switch in, which we don't really, we don't kind of want it to have, but at the same time, we do still have the play where we can switch in Rayquaza and go for that Scald. Although the Groudon probably Precipice Blades when you take a Photon Geyser in the process. It's not ideal. Hmm. We can pull a double switch. For sure. Hmm. It's just if we can get this Groudon. I just don't think... Because Precipice Blades will get the Incineroar. So you probably go Photon Geyser, Precipice Blades into the Finny. That would be my best bet. I'm going to bring in Rayquaza. It should be pretty safe coming in here. And I'm going to actually try for the Scald into the Groudon. Problem is, Tapu Fini so slow at this point. So we're not really going to be able to outspeed the Groudon. Which is a little bit annoying. Because normally we get the jump on it. So this would be an easy decision. We know the Necrozma can't go for its Z move here. So we do have that on our side. Photon Geyser. Yeah, it's going to be into the Finny. And then press with Blades. And I think... Hmm, maybe we take it. Maybe. I don't know, though. I don't really... Hmm, it's hard. Intimidated, we would. Yeah, but unintimidated, we're not taking that. Right. Okay. Well, now, do we bring an Incineroar? Yeah. Yeah, we do. Yep. 
we bring in Cineral, fake out Ultra Necrozma, and we Sword Stance. And then we've got access to that really super speedy, extreme speed that will be able to deal with the Ultra Necrozma. Yeah, we'll do that. Sword Stance. You've got to remember that the Incineroar is in the back for my opponent as well. So it's not massive, it's not straightforward at all. And the thing we could have done maybe here to capitalize on is Sword Stance. Switch Incineroar out into Landorus. So there's the alternate. I mean, oh, it's a, of course it's a Finny. It's not the Incineroar, is it? Hmm. And there's the Groudon. The Groudon definitely attacks here. But where do you attack? You just Precipice Blades? I, I would imagine so. But then we've got oh, Groudon's actually allowing us to uh, get the Sword Stance up for nothing. That's dangerous, dangerous because the Finny goes down the next turn. Now we switch out Incineroar into Landorus, um, and then we've kind of got a checkmate situation almost. And with the Incineroar on the back, it's the perfect thing to keep in the back when Ultra Necrozma comes out into the field because they can't really go for the Earth Power into either a Rayquaza or. And Landorus, they've got to go for the Photon Geyser if they've got it, and that means Incineroar is a great switch in, so it makes it a bit more complicated for my opponent to kind of close this one out for them at least. But we'll go for the Finny now, we should be able to pick up the knockout onto it. Uh, we'll get another Intimidate onto that Groudon, which is super, super good. Um, yep, and there's the Dragon Ascent. Yeah, we take down the Finny. I mean, the Ultra Necrozma comes in, it will go down to a plus two extreme speed, I would imagine. It should do. There's a Precipice Blades, yeah. And we've still got our Sash on our, Rayqu our Rayquaza as well, so I mean, the, it, there's really very little my opponent can do to deal with it now. Um, like, all we do now is just switch out Landorus into Incineroar, and then we've got the end game. Um, I mean, the worst thing would be if if my opponent protects the Necrozma and attacks into the, the Ray, but then if they do that, we've got the Fake Out attack into them the next turn. So, I mean, any way around it, we should be alright, and especially with Landorus in the back to come in and use a Z-move on the Groudon to close down the game. It's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. There's a Dragon Pulse. It will take us down to our Sash. And then we'll get the Dragon Ascent. I'd imagine we'll probably see a Fire Punch into the Rayquaza here. Well, you might be worrying about the, the Landorus. So you, well, it's hard because everything kind of threatens the Groudon at this point. And you just don't have the resource to kind of deal with what's on the field. Uh, there's a the Fire Punch. Is it going to be into... Yeah, okay. And then now Rayquaza can just deal with the Groudon pretty easily. Um... We could fake out Sword Stance again, but I don't think we need a Showbot as much. We can just go for... Um, oh, let's click in, right? A Dragon Ascent and a Fake Out. We might see a Protect here, but we just said the forfeit. So, very good game to my opponent and um, a nice way for us to kind of open up the show today. Yeah, it's an interesting matchup, I think. The big thing about playing the Rayquaza most of the time is making sure that you're keeping the Sash intact on it because once you get it into that position where the Sash is intact and you've got a Sword Stance up, you've got almost two turns to kind of really rip through quite a lot of Pokemon and most of the time with the additional support still from Fake Out from the Incineroar and Icy Wind support and Intimidate support, it's normally enough to kind of close games out. So. It's good, it's good. We'll look for our next opponent. We'll get some music on. Um, in homage of Ultra Necrozma, should we go Ultra Necrozma version 2? It's always a good one. I feel like I might be playing it a little bit too much though recently, but we're not playing it every game. So that's always a positive, isn't it, as well? Right, as I say, hopefully it doesn't take too long to find the next opponent. If it does, guys, I'll just cut out and we'll come straight back to it. And we've got our next opponent on the episode. We've got Aizen from Spain. So let's go straight over to our team preview screen.
And Aizen is running a team of Kyoga, Togodomaru, Incineroar, Gengar, Rayquaza, and Cresselia. So we've got a combination of the Rayquaza and Kyoga here. We've got support and cast of Mega Gengar. She's going to be dangerous because it can trap us in and cause all sorts of problems. We've got Togodomaru there. It's going to be a fast faker Pokemon, Lightning Rod potentially, also that Steel typing. So prone to carry the Steelium Z as well, so we need to be careful with Xerneas around it. Um, the Incineroar with the Fake Out and Intimidate pressure, and then the Cresselia is going to be the main Trick Room setter on this team. And outside of the Gengar that has got access to Icy Wind and then Trick Room, Cresselia is going to be the probably the, the Trick Room setter of this team to support something like the Kyogre. Now what are we going to do against this team? Obviously because there's quite a few physical attackers on the team, I do want Intimidate. Now which Intimidator would I like more than any other? Um, I might bring both to be honest to this game, although it does leave our options a little bit. Stretch, I don't know if I want Xerneas in this game though, I might feel, I feel like I want to go with exactly what we had in the last game to be honest. Um, with the Landorus, no. Mm. Incineroar, Rayquaza, Finny, and Landorus. Yeah, that's what we'll do. I feel bad we keep leaving out our Xerneas all the time. We keep leaving it out, the poor thing. But we did this early last week, and then it just came back with a vengeance and just started kicking butt. So, yes, we'll see if we can bring it again and do some more devastation with it in our next episode. So there's Incineroar Rayquaza for ourselves, and we'll see Gengar, Gengar, Gengar Cresselia, okay. Hmm. Alright. Now, we can fake out Cresselia, prevent any speed control there. We could Dragon Ascent the Gengar, to be honest, because of our Sash. And I feel... Honestly, like it's probably worth it just to get rid of the Gengar with how annoying it can be to deal with and the position that it's going to put our Pokemon in. The problem is, is if the Cresselia goes for a helping hand. But we've got the Sash, so it doesn't really matter. Um, the only thing we could... Yeah, I've got to fake it out because I don't want a Trick Room going up. No way. Um... And we can Dragon Ascent. The other thing is we could potentially Sword Stance, but I don't think you allow or requires a room to protect this first turn. I think you've got to attack into it. So let's see what my opponent does. We do Mega Evolve. Gengar's not Mega Evolving, which is really interesting. Or if it is, it's very slow. There's a fake out into the Cresselia. Dragon Ascent. Is it Sash Gengar and it's going for Trick Room? <laughs> I have a horrible feeling that's what it's going to do. I don't understand this. I don't understand. I mean, the Cursed Body's fine because we're just switching Rayquaza out the next turn anyway. Oh, we're protecting it while we adjust our board position because I imagine the Kyogre comes in now. Or the Rayquaza. Hmm. Okay, I just don't understand. Um, maybe they thought, yeah. I mean, the Kyogre's coming in now. That's, yeah, fine. Hmm. Uh, we, we have to protect Rayquaza. Um, I think we switch Incineroar out to Tapu Fini. We might see a Trick Room here. I'd imagine my opponent's last Pokemon in the back is probably probably Rayquaza. I mean, we could have Dragon Ascent it here, but there is the risk of a Water Spout. It would get rid of the Incineroar, chip our Sash, and then an Ice Beam from the Cresselia, especially with the the Delta Stream gone now, um, and that could potentially lose us Rayquaza. And we're not going to KO either of these targets in front of us at the minute. So we'll protect. There's the Ice Beam. So Finny getting a free switch in here, which is really nice. There's an Icy Wind. Yeah, so we're not seeing a Trick Room, which is... Hmm. Maybe more of a positive than anything else. Now, do we want to 
Sack Incinero or Landorus here? That's the question. I think we've got to Icy Wind. Whatever we do. Mm, and I think we kind of predict. What do we bring in? Landorus. Hmm. Is my opponent potentially got in the back? It's going to be the Rayquaza. I'm going to bring in Landorus to sack that. I prefer to keep the fake out, I think, from Incineroar around for a little later if I can. We might see the Kyogre go for something other than an Ice Beam or a Water type attack. Now it's gone for the Ice Beam again. That's why the Incineroar would have been good. Mm, poor Landorus. There's another Icy Wind. Hmm. Right. Okay, let's bring in... I think we need to bring in Rayquaza. And then... Switch in Finny out into Incineroar. Because I don't think there's going to be a water type attack here. And then we've got the fake out to get a sword stance up the next turn. And I think that's kind of what we need to be doing. To get in a little bit of momentum in this game. So we'll get Incineroar in. The one thing we need to do is, yeah, be careful around this this Kyogre for sure. Probably gonna Ice Beam, Icy Wind again. Kyogre protects. Okay, so it's definitely can't protect the next turn. There's an Icy Wind. Now we'll be able to take an Icy Wind from the Cresselia with our ah, Rayquaza. Because of the strong winds. Um, and because we've already got an Icy Wind onto the Kyogre, it does put us in a position where we can still guarantee to outspeed it the next turn. So I think that's what we do. Cresselia is a real pain to deal with though, isn't it? Oh god, I'm switching out. If it's Rayquaza though, we break a potential Sash. And although we will be slower than at the next turn, uh, to take away, <laughs> that's smart, that's smart. Hmm. Ooh, skill swap, huh, no icy wind. So our sash stays intact, I'm gonna get an intimidate off, I mean that's quite nice. I like, I really like the utility of that. Um, <laughs> intimidate Chris. You imagine if Christ got intimidated, how crazy would that be? Legit top tier VGC mon. Um, all right, so we'll bring in Tapu Fini. We still got our sash intact. Um, do we just attack the Rayquaza? I just feel like the Ray protects him more than anything. Hmm. Because potentially we could just go for a U-turn out onto the crest, get some damage onto it as well. Uh, we could actually double the crest, but I'm just gonna, I'm actually gonna go for the Dragon Ascent into the Rayquaza. It is Mega Evolving, so it's not gonna keep the airlock on the field. I'm not interested in going for that icy wind. Um, it does, it does protect. That makes a lot more sense. Hmm, it would have been better chasing the crest, but I mean, yeah. It's still alright, it's not over. The speed drop's not great.
But as long as the Kyogre is not out in the field at the moment. Mm. Oh, I forget we were intimidated by the crest, weren't we? Yeah. <laughs> now, one of the things we could do is... We could heal Pulse. It's just very... Well, we're going to be slower than the, um, the requires there, aren't we? But we have got the opportunity now to go for an Icy Wind if we want to. Uh, even up the score and just protect our Rayquaza. Because that Rayquaza has just protected. Yeah, it goes for Dragon Ascent into us. Yeah, I think it would have been better going for the Finny there. Oh, I thought I missed Rayquaza there. I don't even care about missing the Cresselia. What do we see the Cresselia do? Toxic. Ugh. That is grim. Grim, grim, grim. That's not good. We need our, our terrain back up. Ugh. No good. No good. No good. No good. Hmm. Are we just minus one? No, we're not minus. They're minus one. We're minus one. So it's a speed tie right now. Now, we could go for the Dragon Ascent into the Rayquaza. I mean, we're plus one, right? I don't think an extreme speed gets the Rayquaza from here. But we could heal Pulse around Ray. It's a little bit risky because if we lose the speed tie, we definitely lose. Um, now we've never won a speed tie before. I'm just going to go for it. I'm going for it. I think we'll win. Oh, it goes for the double protect. Oh my gosh. Oh no, it doesn't double protect here. Sorry. Yeah. If we get toxic here. Oh, it's gone icy wind again. These missed the Rayquaza. No. No miss. Kind of just cycle around. Around and around and around, aren't we? And this toxic's eating away at us the whole time. Hmm. Now, potentially here, what I could do is just switch an Incineroar and then just get rid of the ray because it's going to go for... It's going to go for the Dragon Ascent into us now. But it might think that we'll protect this turn. So it'll target the Finny. Which would be ideal. So we've like that is a possibility. Because they'll think, oh well, we're just gonna go into the protect of the Rayquaza again, we're gonna get icy winded, let's chase down the Finny this turn. Um, and if they do that, that's so good for us. They might not as well, Dragon Ascent. Where are you going into? Nah, it's into us. We should take this though. Oh, I don't know if we're gonna take I don't know if we're gonna take an icy wind. Hopefully that crest goes before us. Oh, it's life orb as well. Mm. And then if we lose the ray here, we lose to the Kyogre. Because we've got no way to deal with it once the icy wind is taken down. It's because we left that crest cellier alone for so long. That's that's the biggest problem. Icy wind might miss. Ah, it never misses, does it? Come on, ray. Hang on. Ah. And there's no way we can take down the combination of Cresselia and in, and Kyogre now. No. Mm. We would have been better off just... And I, like that Cresselia, we've done the same thing in this match, what we did a couple of weeks ago now against the Incineroar, where we let it snarl and snarl and snarl in front of our Azonius. We've just let that Cresselia just do what it likes in front of us, and we can't really do much about it now. Um, Finney's toxic, so the, the, the timer's on that completely. Um, all we can do is fake out. And we can try for it. Oh, we can't even get a burn because the Cresselia's on the ground now. It's got Intimidate and not Levitate. So it's protected by the terrain. Hmm. Ah. And you know, like thinking like Xerneas could have been a way better option here, for, especially against these two Pokemon. Um... Mm, Scald's not doing too bad damage, but I'm going to see another instance. Yeah, just 
swap Intimidate for Intimidate. But it really doesn't matter at this point. I could just hit the forfeit button, but I'll give my opponent the benefit of the victory. Even though it's cycling down so slowly. Oh, I'm really disappointed by this. I am really disappointed by this, but um, I think this is one we could have definitely won. Cresselia is still a very good Pokemon in this format. Very good Pokemon in this format. Let's go Snarl and let's go Scald into Cresselia. Hmm. Come on, guy. Let's do this. Okay. There's just no need to take this long, really. I'm not complaining, but I mean, it's pretty safe. You just, you just water spout. Take the Incineroar down, and the Finny's pretty much gone anyway after this turn. We'll get the berry. No, our berry's gone, so that's fine. That's even better. And he hopefully faints right now. Oh, skill swap. Stop skill swapping. <laughs> I guess the crest has got nothing better to do at this point. Right. <clears throat> yeah, this is taking too long and no one wants to watch this. So what I'm going to do, guys, is just hit that forfeit button. Say good game to my opponent. Oh, come on, Finny. Yeah, this is ridiculous. This is ridiculous. I should have hit the forfeit button the turn before. Um, My opponents won fair and square. Good game to them. We could have played a lot better. There was areas there where we just let ourselves get kind of overwhelmed by stuff. And the, the fact is that we've just left that Cresselia alone for so long and just let it disrupt the whole time. It's got to be something that you've got to like pay attention to and make, make note of. There was... How many times we were sitting on plus two or even plus one with with um, Rayquaza where we could have just sniped it rather than concentrating down on that Rayquaza on the opposite end of the field so much. So, by the by, thank you for tuning in though, guys. I hope you've enjoyed today's episode. We'll be back again tomorrow with more X-ray action, so do tune in for that. Have a great day, morning, afternoon, whatever time of day it is, and I will look forward to catching up with you all very soon. So until then, take care and bye-bye.